There I am. Oh, now I'm I little, see you. I'm a little small on my screen. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm up here at the top and you're you're a big screen down below me. I don't know. Oh, if you move the mouse, there's a setting. It'll be gallery view or speaker Gal view. There we go. There we go. There we go. So right. this is now now we're now we're side by side. All right, perfect. So I don't know what we're we gonna go by your uh your name on the Discord or we're gonna go by your real name. Well, you can call me Scott. I usually introduce myself as Scott when I'm doing my own podcast, but everyone on the the Akira Discord knows me as Rugmo, so <laughs> I, I keep the old name around. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scott, let's let's start by why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, um, well, I'm not really a religious person. Never have had Christianity in my history at all, but uh. It was it was really Jordan Peterson that got me to really consider what you know what religion actually means and all of this and all of that yeah. and these different terminologies and one of the major thing one of the major things that I've been thinking about recently is how Jordan Peterson is really obsessed about like certain little parts of the Bible like the story of Cain and Abel. Like you and I both know he'll go on for hours about just a few little lines. So I thought that, you know, maybe I could do the same thing with an outsider perspective on the Tower of Babel. So I've been really thinking about the meaning crisis with uh, John Verveke and all that. And I really think that what it comes down to is that when we're trying to have these conversations with each other, we're actually speaking different languages with each other. Like it, it doesn't have to be the difference between English and French for it to be, you know, somehow our languages have been confounded. So that, that's the main theme that I want to work with on this conversation. Well, I think that is very true. And over the last couple of years, one of the big realizations that I have had is it's amazing language works at all <laughs> because you are very right in that point that we are, yeah. we mean different things by the words that we use. We are, we are pushing agendas. So that's the sloshy aspect, the fudgy aspect. We are pushing, we are subtly pushing different agendas with the words that we use and we are barely communicating. Even if we're both speaking English, even if we're both more or less within the same cultural bubble. Mm -hmm. And if you want, if anybody wants to get an example of this, get married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Try, try to just have a conversation with anybody. It doesn't have to be someone you live with, just like your best friends who you think you know pretty well. You ask them, hey, do you believe in God? And their answer is, well, not the Christian God, as far as I can tell, but you know, yeah. How how do you get the conversation going from there when we can't even agree on what the word believe means? Yeah. I mean, your your work here on YouTube with that series, the words that fudge, has been like that's the book you need to write, Paul. That's <laughs> that's what we need. That's the knowledge that this world is hungering for. Okay. Because if we if we can't understand the basic words that we're using with each other, then how do we have a conversation when you say, I believe in God? I, I think that means, well, I think that this deity literally exists and is watching over us. But like you talk, talk a lot about how, to, no, that's just what I trust in. God is what I trust. Not, it's not quite exactly the same thing as if you say, do you believe in evolution? Like we've, scene from Stephen Woodford talking to Jonathan Pajot. Well, we're we're evolved primates, right? Well, I I wouldn't say that's my first example, but well, then I can't talk to you at all. This is just another <laughs> one of those wacky Christians that I just can't reach. And when when he said that, it it really really bothered me because hmm. I'm like, if you want to give up on this conversation just because you know, you need to do a little bit more work on translation, then I, I don't know where, where the next step is. Wow. Wow. That's, that's really, 
quite profound because I think in a nutshell, you just, you just sort of laid out the great, if there's something about our current age in terms of the relational dynamics we have with each other, it's right there. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the great, I, I'm trying to remember how David Brooks phrased it in a New York times piece. Um, and I'm, I'm not remembering it accurately, but it's basically the, the, the great, it's basically the great age of walking away because mm. there's a, there's a certain blindness we have to our own speech. We don't listen to ourselves. And so when he says, you know, we're evolved apes, you might say, well, please tell me about the orangutan that pushed you through its birth canal. So, no, that's not what I mean. Then, then <laughs> what exactly are we talking about here? Yeah. You know, were you nursed by a chimpanzee? Um, there's, and we don't understand. I mean, this, this is a group of people that wants to complain about literalism. Please tell me the literalism that you're manifesting with this language game. Yeah. Because unless, unless some orangutan birthed, you know, pushed you into this world through its birth canal, um, this evolved primate thing is about as abstract as anything you're going to find in the Bible. But we don't see it that way. And that was yeah. Peugeot's point but Stephen couldn't see it. And, yeah. and th the advantage that Peugeot has is that he's been living in a majority materialist culture. And, you know, I know I get in trouble with half of my audience when I talk about that. I, I'm not a skeptic about white privilege because the underclass always knows the language of the overclass better than the other way around. Because in order to make your way in this world, you need to be able to translate into the dominant frame just in order to relate to people. But those who are very deeply ensconced in the dominant frame don't need to learn the other skill because they don't need it. It's basically like in America, if you know English, you're just fine. If you come here speaking Spanish, you'd better learn English. But then you know English and Spanish and the English speakers don't know Spanish. And that's what's happening in terms of language games all over the place right now. Yeah, I have so much admiration for anybody who actually has the ability to speak two languages. And we can, we can extract upon that too. Like it doesn't have to be Spanish and English or French and English. It could be like speaking in mythological language or speaking in religious language or in scientific language. It, it does the language barriers that we have today aren't just built on national borders anymore. They're more like separated, separated by ideology than anything else. Yeah. And you yeah. see that with the woke crowd and you know, James yeah. Lindsay talking about, you know, this is the new religion, and they're all, you know speaking like they do on rick and morty like <laughs> us millennials have our own language i'll admit that right now like i saw you in a video once recently where you said uh the word literally should probably go away i'm like fair enough we overuse that too much that's my generation that's that's i'll take that criticism very much <laughs> the men do you know the what you know the word that the women you overuse too much Oh, would that amazing. Be amazing amazing <laughs> amazing sometimes i i hear that word it's like that word's gotta go you're wearing it out we're gonna need yeah. a better word for it pretty soon because amazing will be dead yeah amazing. we had a similar we had a similar conversation on my own podcast on book wave and the the response of one of my buddies was yeah totally like there's another one <laughs> like totality it doesn't like totally doesn't mean the totality of something anymore it means yeah. oh yeah i agree yeah 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 the yeah. way we speak to each other like it's easy to see how all of these holes are found 
And you don't need God to come down to confound our languages for us to stop understanding everything that we're trying to say to each other. Right. And what it really comes down to, as far as I've figured out, is patience, empathy, and emotional control. And if you don't have those three things, then you can't have a conversation across the aisle. Wow. That's good. That's really good. Now you've, uh, you, you've colonized this thing pretty good so far, but I don't know much about you yet. So in order for me yeah. to understand kinda, you kind of jumped ahead a little bit, you did, you did. <laughs> yeah. My so, so you have fast. your book wave podcast and I know right. I haven't watched it, but you've, you've sent that to me a couple times and, mm-hmm. but so, so part of this, part of this business about not being able to speak with one another is that, you know, what Peugeot kept saying to, to, to rationality rules, which he did not understand at all, which was, I need to know where you are. Now, of course, that's, well, I'm sitting here in you know, the UK. <laughs> no, that's not where you are. There's a, there's a very, there, there's a very deep sense of where that is not geography, it's cultural. So, I, I need to have some sense of where you, you are, Scott. So why don't you, why yeah, don't okay. you tell me where you are? Well, like I mentioned before, briefly, I didn't really have anybody overtly religious in my childhood, except for you know, a couple of grandmothers okay. who was like, you know, they're old, they're religious. That's fine. But you know, the, <laughs> the newer generation, <laughs> I, I actually remember the first time I was comfortable with the label of atheist was when one of my grandmothers tried to convince me that, you know, Noah's flood was a thing that actually happened. And that was an historical event. So I'm like, you know, I was, it was the kind of situation that Jordan Peterson makes fun of, like, you know, the smart 13 year old atheist. I was probably even younger than. 13 at the time but i'm like i go to school i know my history i know that's not that's not real i know how old the planet really is so you know that was kind of where i started drifting away from it but you know i definitely wouldn't have been able to tell you this you know years back when i was you know living this story but it definitely wasn't enough so you know i had a a mental breakdown, I guess you could call it a toxic relationship ended. That's, that's the easiest way to put that. And uh, I found myself talk or listening to a lot of Jordan Peterson videos after seeing the, the C16 stuff and all of the people outside the college yelling at him saying, you're not using our pronouns, you're the Antichrist. So there was all of that. And then at the same time, I was listening to a lot of these like uh, lo-fi videos, like people mixing lo-fi with the Simpsons and stuff like that on YouTube. Huh. So I was just listening to a lot of like lo-fi, wave of Simpsons, little cutscenes that people were editing up. And I saw one with like Bart Simpson skateboarding on the sidewalk. And it turns out that was my first experience of seeing Akira the Dawn on YouTube. So you know, long story short, the 12 rules for life pretty much changed my life. I got the book. I joined Akira's discord, met a bunch of great people. I I joined the book club that one of the, one of the guys in there was starting. I eventually became the, the center of the book club. We said like, Hey, we're meeting up every week to read these books by, you know, whoever it was a tribe by sebastian younger and meditations by marcus aurelius those were the first two books that we read together and then we're like halfway through the marcus aurelius meetings we're like why don't we record these i'm like yeah i i have the equipment i have obs and editing software on my computer i used to you know attempt video game video content on youtube so figured yeah why not let's just do this because another reason for that would be because you know not everyone could make the meetings every week. So anyone who missed a week would be like, oh, what, what did the guys chat about last week? I'm like, oh, it's on YouTube. Haven't missed anything. Perfect. And we just keep going. And then, you know, people dropped off. P- 
people started taking the book club more seriously. And those of us that did started getting like better microphones. We got webcams and we started the, the official book wave podcast. we got a website, my buddy, Will, who I knew personally, I brought him on. Like he wasn't like a, he didn't come to the discord through the, like Akira the Dawn's music. He came through the discord through me so we could like continue through the, the book club. And that's when it became like its own whole entity where we started doing our own thing. And then I think the first video of yours that I saw was when another one of the people from the Akira discord posted one of their conversations with you. So a lot of people, or you talk about how a lot of people don't watch all of the conversation videos, but those ones are my favorite right after the, the words of fudge series. I don't know. <laughs> so I think, I think the perspective of everyone like having these conversations and able to cross this line in the sand, like, that perspective is the most valuable thing we can have right now and i i picked up a lot not just from you interacting with these people but like all of their responses and how they're all dealing with these same questions it's been really eye-opening so thanks again for that yeah, my pleasure uh, well no, wow there's a lot there Tell me more about, I haven't had a conversation with Akira. I should probably pursue that. He's done some, he's done some, he's been on Rebel Wisdom. He's been on a few videos. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, you know, I've enjoyed some of his, what, what, what about Akira drew you? And yeah, let's start there. Yeah, uh, it wasn't necessarily akira himself like at the start obviously that's what it was because like well i like lo-fi music i'm a musician so music okay. has always been a huge part of my life and at the same time as like getting into jordan peterson and really starting to clean up my room you know and standing up straight but like akira's community like in that discord was added so much more to it and like you know, it's what Verveke talks about when it's like, you know, you can perceive the music and you can, you know, it's perspective knowledge when you're watching the videos and listening to the wave music, but it's participatory when you can actually jump into the community of everyone else having the same experience yeah. and having the conversation with them. So, and then of course the book club on top of that, and that's just been evolving since the start. So it's boy that's it's a really it's a really important point it's because i'm i just i just i'm trying to get my head around the discord the bridges of meaning discord server which is the obviously it's the i mean it's the it's my introduction into discord servers i was i'm not much of a gamer and i didn't know what discord was and a bunch of the guys from the local meetup said, oh, we should start a Discord server. And and then the hey, second that? Attempt, <laughs> yeah. it took off. And so I've been trying to see, okay, what can be had in this? What, what part does this play? And so, boy, that's really good in terms of its, its participatory. Well, 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 flesh out for me a little bit more how that plays out in your life i mean in your relationships i mean you mentioned uh you know a, a romantic relationship that went sideways and um and then you know it's interesting to me how the discord server then man then eventually evolved into the book club and the book club is also mediated by you know this these screens what but 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 now with when you when you introduce a book into that you've now got another entity in a sense coming in whether it's um sebastian mm -hmm. younger or marcus aurelius or you know now you're now you're doing some time travel because if yeah. you're if your initial if your initial tower of babel image holds i mean not only are we having the the, the challenges to having to connecting this way via words is significant. You know, that gets multiplied when you're talking to a, a Roman emperor who's been dead almost 2000 years. 
Yeah, well, pretty much everything that I've just blurted out to you in that little intro has been culminating in my head ever since the start of this podcast or ever since I joined the ever since I joined the Discord. But hmm. I would say like it's a lot like we usually have like the same group of guys when we do our get together, but when we have an extra element like the book come in and we can talk about stuff like time travel and like going back what did Nietzsche think about this like after you read beyond good and evil everything else you read after that factors into beyond good and evil so it's not just like me Pat Jason and Will it's also you know Marcus Aurelius over here Frederick Nietzsche over here Ayn Rand up here like after we read Atlas Shrugged, every video afterwards, we've somehow been able to reference objectivism, whether we're poking holes in it or just strengthening some of those ideas. Like I'm not an objectivist by any means, but I think she had a lot of holes in her theory, but she definitely had a lot of good ideas too. Like hmm. she drew a lot from Aristotle and what would we have without Aristotle? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, boy, that's really helpful because, I mean, what you're laying down is you're, you're, you're putting down the layers and mm -hmm. you're, it's just fascinating to me how, how this new, these new media are, are reconstructing you and your community and, and by you, you know, further out into the culture and beyond. I mean, this is a, this is a, I mean, what you're laying out for me, these are profound transformations in your life. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, probably five years ago, if I would have told you, yeah, you're going to be, um, you're going to be reading you're going to be reading world-class books and, and digging this, in the Holy Bible. <laughs> yeah, the Holy Bible. You're going to, you're going to be reading the most important books of human civilization and, and processing them with others on the internet. And this is going to be profoundly meaningful for you and a group of friends. Well, let me ask you this question what what's the what's the last what's the last thing degree or grade you completed in formal education well i went to college for like a a welding course but <laughs> afterwards some like medical conditions came up so okay some some issues there with staying consistently employed let's say okay <laughs> but uh but that, you're getting a, a, a you're getting of, a world class education yeah. for the price of an ISP connection. Yeah, and like it wouldn't be nearly any it wouldn't be anything close to what I'm experiencing without you know the other three or four guys that I meet up with once a week to say, hey, what what did you think about this line? And they all have a different answer. Like there's, there's nothing more valuable than that kind of perspective. You can just break, break down those differences for an hour and a half and not run out of things to talk about. This is fascinating. This is fascinating. But at the same time, I almost feel like, like I'm an outsider looking in, like I can't identify myself as a Christian because I honestly just don't believe the same things that, you know, any Christian has said they believe, but I can still take all the knowledge from the Bible and say, Hey, this is, this is worth considering guys. And when people say it's just a story, that's the biggest oxymoron I can think of. Like when I, when I talk about people, when I talk to people, that say like, oh, the Bible is just a story. I'm like, where would you be without story? Like we sit here and talk about Star Wars for hours and hours and hours all the time. We debate little factoids about, you know, who's faster between 
Superman and the Flash. And we use, you know, whatever little bits of information we can find, like, you know, you know, Christians are doing the same thing with their Bible and they're taking it a lot more seriously than we are yeah. talking about Batman. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, and when you ask the question, what do you mean by taking it more seriously? Hmm. I mean, that's be, because it, it, it comes down to, in many ways, there's a, there's a guy, um, the Richard Reif, who is an interesting character. He, he comes up more and more in sort of reactionary circles. And one of his definitions is you, you don't take anything. It's not really his definition. I'm adapting it, but you don't take anything seriously until you have to say no, a hard no to something in the world, or maybe even something in yourself. I mean, that's sort of the definition of taking something seriously. I mean, part of part of taking something seriously is your your noshing down in a in a really serious way with your friends on on really serious books and enjoying the meaning of 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 working through this hard stuff. That's one level of seriousness, but another level of seriousness is the is the hard no to something that you really want. I mean, that's that's to a degree where, where, where the real serious stuff begins, um, the real sacrificial stuff. So I, I'm, I'm just, I mean, this is also, cause I know you've, you've messaged, messaged me a bunch of times and, you know, on the surface of it, the, the degree to which you colonize someone is the degree to which you actually move their calendar in the world because there are right now, there are, more videos than you and I have in our biological frame to consume. And the attention frame is less than that. And I mean, these frames get smaller and smaller and smaller, which is why communication is so very difficult. But, um, you know, I'm just tremendously, I'm just tremendously impressed. And I, I don't know the better word for it to, to just sort of take in the vision that in just a few words you've laid out in front of me this morning it's deeply fascinating to me well it took me a while to get here too so <laughs> <laughs> and and, it, and oh. it makes me it makes me want to know um well maybe i should uh maybe maybe you know maybe i should ask to be invited onto your podcast sometime with I, a bunch I of was... the rest of you I was going to save that for the very end. I was going to invite you on to the Bookwave podcast. I've already discussed that with the the rest of the lives. I, I think I'm going to have to do that because let, let me let me offer this perspective. The United States spends billions of dollars trying to achieve and almost always failing. Oh, yeah, that's a whole nother realm because there's a lot of fudginess in that. What, what you all have done with each other, building up no student debt. Yeah. I that's have a kind of a crazy thought, isn't it? I have a little bit of student debt, but none of it's from, you know, philosophy or theology or. <laughs> and, and how much did you learn acquiring that student debt versus how much have you learned with you and your friends yeah. doing this out of pure joy like i i went to college for welding so it was pretty much all review from high school for me like i had a pretty cool welding class in high school i actually my welding teacher was making fun of me for a little bit because i broke a record for how many welding slash machine shop credits someone was able to graduate with that was only because i i stayed for like a victory lap because i needed extra credits for what I wanted but you know what did that all amount to in high school they wouldn't let me take philosophy because my grades weren't high enough so here I am talking here about philosophy are. on YouTube <laughs> wow 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 <laughs> wow this is this is this is deeply fascinating and you're making me do you know who Julian is 
Um, not offhand, no. Oh, he's another. I mean, I'd see your. I assume that's Toronto Blue Jays, and I see the, uh, I see the flag behind you, and I see I am Canadian. So where where do you live in yeah. Canada? A little town called Huntsville in central Ontario. Central. I'm Ontario. I'm on Toronto on I'm on Toronto time. Okay. But, uh, okay. You know, well, we you call it Toronto time. You call it New York time. So whatever works. <laughs> you should you should connect up with Julian, who's a Hutterite, and I think he's in Manitoba, uh, who mm. who who spends his days welding too, but spends his time reading philosophy. You should definitely have Julian on your podcast. Um, and he has a blog about Kierkegaard, and he was one of the first people. He he was. So Julian just contact. I started making videos and Julian just contacted me and says, I want to talk to you. And I, by that point, I'd had a few conversations, but I started recording them. So his was one of the first conversations that I recorded and shared on the channel. And Julian, to me, was a revelation. And so he spends his day welding dumpsters, but um, reading philosophy and talking about it with his friends. And so I I'm. I'm just deeply fascinated in this because, well, I'm, I'm also rather fascinated in terms of where is this going for you? Because, you know, right now it's colonizing your brain, but it's going to manifest itself in the rest of your life. Yeah, I, I don't really have a good answer to that question specifically yet. but No, you when, don't, and you can't. I don't expect we, you to answer it. And even yeah, if you but, did, you'd be wrong. You're right. I'll, tr I'll try my best, though. But whenever we talk about, you know, having our own framework, right, as an operating system, and I'm taking a look at all of these frameworks, you know, I got the Bible, I got the Koran up here, I got a bookshelf full of old literature and world religions. I'm trying to build a frame out of all of these frames that don't really fit how I see the world. Right. Like in a way that I'm not sure how to, how to really articulate it, but any reason that someone would have for wanting to, you know, leave a religion, like say they want to leave the church, they don't want to be Christian anymore. That's kind of analogous to the impulse that I'm having right now in my little spot of atheism because hmm. i know that when i look at other people who use the word atheist i i don't have anything in common with these people like they're more worried about saying you know god in the bible says pi is three so <laughs> your god's pretty bad at math eh like come on man it's a useless <laughs> conversation to have <laughs> wow you you just you just improved upon i can't tell you how many hours of silly atheist <laughs> christian debates on the internet that i've heard uh, you just yeah. you just laid it right there like i was that, that i've listened to a lot of them because like this is the framework that i've been using and you know listening to your videos and listening to jordan peterson it's like okay this piece of the frame that's broken i have to replace that slide that and see how that works you know we'll, like i still have a soft spot for sam harris even though he says a bunch of things i don't agree with because like if it wasn't for him i wouldn't have gotten into like taking meditation really seriously that's how i got into that okay. so it wasn't just oh, I'm going to listen to all these guys making fun of Christians because, you know, I don't like what Christians have to say. It was more like, no, Sam Harris, more than, you know, Dawkins and a few others, have a certain respect for this sense of spirituality or whatever you want to call it, the transcendent. Hmm. But he doesn't articulate it very well. He's just like, well, it's all consciousness. Yeah, but can't we have a conversation about that? Nope, it's just all consciousness. That's the mystery. I'm like, okay, you have all the answers I see. I still have questions. So that's how I live my life. Wow. That was really good too. I'm glad you have a podcast. I'm going to have to listen. That's really good. That was a really good riff. Well, and, and, and 
Oh, that's fascinating. Oh, that's so fascinating. That's I listened recently. Um, uh, Sisyphus, there's this YouTube channel, Sisyphus something or other. He's been putting out these little 20, 30 minute videos. He had one on Jordan Peterson. He had one on Sam Harris. And they're really good little videos. And, and it's their little bio, biography is so important to me because I don't know. Biography is sort of a, a, a way to sort of get up to speed on another individual. And there's a little biography of Sam Harris. And I found it very uh, helpful in exactly the way that your that little riff you had was helpful for me and a little bit more appreciation for Sam Harris, both in terms of why he attracted the audience he did, but also probably why he's losing the audience he's losing right now and and how Jordan Peterson sort of fit into that. And and Peterson, gosh, it's so interesting. See, this is why I have Rando's conversation because I, I don't trust my salience hierarchy enough to, you said it very well, patience, empathy, emotional control. That's, that's, that's what you need to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Oh, this has been, this has been a revelation for me. This is really good. I'm, now I'm all conflicted because I have all these really good conversations in the can and I want to publish them at once, but the channel can't take that. So, uh, but I definitely look forward to publishing this thing because, because maybe I think can, you are, maybe we can figure out so you can send this recording to me and then we can both publish it. I'll send it to you. You can publish it. Um, I'll send it after I've got a conversation at 11, but I'm definitely going to want to go on your podcast. I'm definitely going to want to hear what the other people have to say because I, I think it's it the, the the question of this new medium the internet and it's really a media because it's it's multiple mediums and and the way that this is reshaping our world and reshaping our consciousness we're just at the beginning of that and as people have often noted the 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 invention of the printing press seriously disrupted Northern Europe, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, the the okay. internet is going to seriously disrupt the entire world. And, you know, your little story here of your little group is a hopeful story in a lot of different ways, but it's a very different story than what you'll hear from, let's say, Brett Weinstein or, or certain it, and it, it gets into both part of Jordan, the first video that the second video that colonized that Jordan Peterson colonized me with was a, a piece of a Harvard visit he had where he talked about great books. Because Peterson rightly noted, there are reasons these books are great. And no matter how much dismissal based on some arrogant some arrogance based on other people's technology these books have a value that we are not quite in touch with and you can you can you can see part of this that you can bear the witness to this value are the ripples that they leave in human civilization and you guys are manifesting that yeah and that reminds me a lot about you know a fellow canadian philosopher marshall McLuhan, who coined the <laughs> phrase the medium is the message right so yeah. you could say like a book about a book a podcast a video or a television program all about the same thing all about religion are all going to be interpreted differently Yeah, because you can read a book and say, wow, that was really profound. And then mention it to one of your friends, or you could watch a video about it, join a discord, have hours upon hours of conversation with other random people you meet online who came across the same piece of information and really want to get to the bottom of it. So in a way we're making media a lot more participatory 
with the interaction of like just the comments section, having a Twitter account and, uh, you know, having a discord where you can have these online forums to have these really deep conversations where we really couldn't before. Like we're still limited, obviously. There's a screen between us. It'd be a lot better if we were in person having this conversation. And, you know, a lot gets lost when you're just typing to one another over a Discord chat. But I, I think there is progress being made. We just have to be weary of the limitations of the technology yeah. as much as the gifts that it gives us. Yeah, I, I completely agree. That's very well said. Where, um, where do you want to see this go for you and your little tribe? Uh, don't really know. Yeah. Just carving out the path one yeah. footstep at a time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Has it now where, where geographically are many of your conversation partners? Oh, well, there's two of us in Ontario and there's two in Texas. So we're, <laughs> <laughs> so we're split down the middle between america and canada how how back, go ahead how back, big of a listenership do you have how many subs on we have 55 subscribers on youtube so not that many yet god but, bless you you. <laughs> i hope at the end of after i post this you will have more <laughs> and anybody who who wants to get a hold of me and have a conversation on our podcast you know that possibility is is open to us I'm I'm always in the Akira Discord. I I'm one of the moderators in there. So okay, I'll have to I'll have to I don't know if I I'll have to I'm jump also, onto the Akira Discord. I haven't been there at all. Well, let me let me ask you this question, just from a personal, very selfish mode. To what degree is Akira himself? How does he participate on the Discord? He's not very much in the Discord, but like he does streams every night and every morning on Twitch and YouTube. Yeah, that's so it's a lot. Not, it's not that he doesn't participate with the community. He's yeah. always participating every day, twice a day. Every morning, he's on Twitch. Every evening, he's on YouTube. So, you know, if you're ever lonesome, you know, come hang out with us. Meaning Wave exists. So, well, let's let's talk a little bit about I mean, if you're ever lonesome, I mean, you said it that way. That's interesting. And because mm -hmm. one of the, one of the, I mean, before YouTube and all this stuff, I was uh, a member of a, a listserv. Do you know what a listserv is? No. Wow. Now I'm <laughs> old. A listserv <laughs> back in the day when the internet meant email. Okay. A list serve was the way that you could create a community over email. And what that was is you would send your email to a particular email address, which was basically a repeater. So you'd send your email to this repeater and it would send it to a hundred people and they would okay. send the, e the response to the repeater and it would get sent. And what you would do in that way is you would create a community via email and this was a community around my denomination, the Christian Reformed Church, and just conversations and discussions. And the, the nice thing about email, as opposed to say, Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, is that email was heavily text and you could write, I mean, just like with every medium, you had to figure out, you know, three, four paragraphs might be what that community would bear. If you went four or five pages and nobody would read it, if you went just a few lines, you'd have to be very clever. But Via, via email and a list serve, you could create a community. And I continue to participate in that community to this day, although I don't have as much time to, sometimes people ask me, what were you doing before YouTube? I mean, besides pastoring and being a father and all of those layers, but what were you doing to do all of your processing? I was processing and learning and growing via email because I would type out and people would type responses, but it was in many ways a, a slower, more textual medium than what you're doing. And what you're doing, well, it's also deeply fascinating that what you're doing came out of this weird, I shouldn't say weird, but it's very strange to me and new to me, 
I mean, when I listen to some, I've only, I haven't listened to Akira that much, but I always kind of looked at it like, this is cool. I kind of like it, but I'm not sure I know what I'm looking at. I I can hear it, but what does this mean? And so it's interesting that a discord would, you know, it, it's almost like you need something around which a community forms and that that community will in some ways manifest something about what it forms around. And now that community is growing new, new arms and legs, which are doing different things from that community, but also reaching out and connecting to other communities. So stuff is happening here that we don't understand, but yeah. we're doing it. We're all nodes in a network, as Jordan yeah. Peterson would say. And all these nodes are firing on all cylinders. They are. Well, let me ask you this question. In your, how long have you been doing your book wave now? Um, a couple of years. I think it was February of 2018 is when we started officially. What have you learned about what it takes to have a meaningful discussion about a hard book? Oof. Well, hard books are some of our favorites. So we just, we haven't released this one yet, but we just re recorded a video of our review of Uncle Tom's Cabin. So that, that, that book, that is, as I said in the video, unenjoyable by design. So, you know, I tried to focus on like the whole comparison of, um, you know, when Jordan Peterson talks about, you know, picturing yourself as, you know, an SS guard or a Nazi or like the worst horrible thing you could imagine. Like, imagine just putting yourself in the position of like a slave owner yeah. or a slave, either yeah. one, it's bad news bears all around. Yeah. Like even to make like tiny little comparisons, it, it feels dirty, right? Like, well, these yeah. people, they thought of other people as property and yeah. the other guy, Jason in our group made the comparison. Well, like, yeah, they're property in their eyes. So if your car starts driving away on its own maybe that's their perspective i'm like yeah. oof that's those those are hard that's a hard perspective to try to get behind and you know when trying to to make that comparison with uncle tom's cabin or crime and punishment you know starting to read the bible it, it's not that hard yeah. <laughs> like yeah i, I could see myself in a world where everyone is you know sacrificing their children to this god molech or whatever yeah because they think that's going to bring them salvation and yeah. then when you know yahweh comes along and says you know you don't have to sacrifice them that was the first time that happened like that was the first time someone said, you know, it's okay if I don't sacrifice my kid. And, you know, that's a lot of thing. That's a big thing that atheists don't understand too. Like the binding of Isaac isn't just a story of, oh, this guy in the 21st century deciding, oh, you know, God wants me to sacrifice my kid. I better sacrifice my kid. No, it was the norm yeah. that they were sacrificing their children, yeah. all of them. Yeah. Every firstborn gets sacrificed to this deity. And all of a sudden, you know, God of the Bible is real or not. It's profound beyond words to say that someone came along and said, this isn't the answer. We're not doing this anymore. All right. Yeah. So, well, and, and it's not just. When you, when you look at, when you look at, when you, when you look at cheap contemporary propaganda, it, it doesn't take seriously. Something had to displace child sacrifice. 
because child sacrifice functioned for a reason. And that's that we can't see because to us, child sacrifice, there is no reason for it. But that's witness to the displacement. And what we can't see is the displacement. And we can't see before the displacement what the need for child sacrifice was. Now, you will still find in the news stories which horrify us about some parent brutalizing their child and child protective services comes and takes the child out of the home. I mean, that happens today. And we look upon we look upon that abusive parent as an abnormality. And what that abnormality bears witness to is that what we are is, is this distributed organism. That's what we really are. And the fact that we, the evidence for us being a distributed organism is the fact that though we communicate badly, we sort of still make it work. And so when there's a child that is being sacrificed by a mother or a father or a step parent, we don't understand that transaction in the way those transactions used to be universal. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, it, it makes sense, but I'm sure it'll make more sense the second time I hear it. It usually does. <laughs> <laughs> But your point is your point is deeply profound. And I again, I'm just I, I'm just blown away at what you guys are doing and how you got here. And I I want to see way, way more people doing what you're doing. And the thing is, I know they are because mm-hmm. I know it's happening, but you guys have sort of found a way to do it together. And I'm you know, I I'm, I live in this weird space where on one hand, I really feel the need to continue to remind people on the Discord and who listen to my channel that the two-dimensionality of our conversations is a serious limitation and defect, and that in order for these conversations to finally yield the the fruitful meaning we long for we have to it has to get out of the screen and into three dimensionality and into time and into matter and into all of these things but at the same time when i have a conversation like this right now i am i am tremendously impressed by what has been accomplished via even thin clients like discord servers and youtube that i'm 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 profoundly impressed by that right now yeah like one of the names that akira had for his discord for the longest time was the church of meaning and huh. that's you, you can't really say it much better than that but you know it's it's had a couple names along along the the timeline meaning wave autonomous zone <laughs> gets kind of silly with it but you know, I, the church of meaning i think there's really something to that because it'll never be like a, a temple that we all assemble in and all sing hymns together but it's a place where people can get together and you know play a couple games of among us or have a chat about the bible or anything Lots of people debate politics in there too. So, you know, that's, that's always in the zeitgeist. So people are always, it doesn't matter who's the president, prime minister, people are going to be talking about politics. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. Well, we, we are out of time lamentably, but you already know how to send me messages and send me a message and let's, let's calendar, um, let's calendar, a time to um i'd love to i'd love to be on your podcast Absolutely. and and i i'm definitely going to you your podcast has definitely risen up my salience hierarchy i'm definitely going to take a look at it because 
Yeah, I've gone from some guy pestering you on Discord to an actual face now. <laughs> that's right. Well, that, that's that's and that's that's an important process to understand because yes. you're more real to me because I see you in a context and you know, I mean, there's a lot of people out there trying to colonize me for better or for worse, but uh, you've done a good job this morning in a very short amount of time. So congratulations. Um, I My goal was to be a little bit more clear with what I was trying to say than Stephen Woodford or Jonathan Peugeot when they were interacting with each other. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. I'm and and wow, I um I'm excited. I'm excited to share this video. I will I have another conversation coming up almost right away, but I will upload this to YouTube uh unlisted and send you the link. And you can, you know, feel free to publish it however or whenever you want to right away. If you want to, that's absolutely fine. And I will Perfect. post this on my channel coming up in the next few days. But I, wow, I'm, you know, good for you. Good for you. you you're doing important stuff. And I want to encourage you and, uh, and cheer you on because I'm, I'm really excited about your project. So keep at it. Thanks. I mean, that means a lot, man. All right. Well, I'm, I wish we had more time right now, but that's sort of the nature of this thing. But uh, yeah, send me a link and we'll find a, well, send me a note and we'll find a time to schedule something. It'll probably have to be in January for me because the season is upon us. And, um, yep. <laughs> but I, I very much, I very much want to meet with the rest of your guys and I will, I will check out some of your videos before then. Yeah. Take care. All and right. To say it in my own language, may the force be with you. I received that. <laughs>